7 Steps to Renew Your Mind. Hi, my name is Lana and I'm happy that you're watching this. Today I would like to share about 7 practical steps on how to renew your mind. And step number 1 is don't wait for the circumstances around you to change before you start changing your mind to the Word of God. Because that's how God works. I remember myself being many times so negative and all of those emotions and my thinking, my pattern thinking, it was so immersed in negativity. And I didn't even like believe that I can change because it's, it's, it's so natural at that time for me to be negative and to think negatively that when I heard someone telling me, you just need to, by faith, you know, not rely on your circumstances and start to be positive. To me, that was so painful to hear. And I know a lot of people find themselves in the same boat, but that's where it takes a step of faith. And I remember one time I was listening to one uh, message and I remember this preacher said something that stood out to me and I remember this until now and it helped me so much. He said that it takes the same amount of energy to be negative as it is to be positive regardless of what's going on in your life. And so that kind of like puzzled me and I decided like I made a decision, you know what? Okay, I'm going to trust God and I'm just going to train my mind through pain to be more positive regardless of what's going on around me. And I started to work on myself. And you know what? That's amazing because this is how God brings his light into our life is when we don't rely on the circumstances around us to change of how we feel inside. But we start working on ourselves from the inside, allowing the word of God to bring light in us before there there's light in our circumstances, relationships, or whatever it is. Number two, stop believing that you cannot control your thoughts. Now, the reality is you can't control your subconscious mind, but you can control your thoughts. The Bible tells us to think on these things commands us. You shall meditate on a day and night, Joshua 1, 8. On his law, he meditates day and night, Psalm 1, 2. The word of God wouldn't tell us to think on those things unless we could not control our thoughts whatsoever. Now, many times it's not easy to retrain your mind to control your thoughts. And that's how the thoughts, they spill into your subconscious mind. And your subconscious mind is your automatic reaction to everything that we do. Your automatic thinking that thinks on its own, thinks behind you. But our thoughts, we can catch them. We can capture them to the obedience of Christ. And that's what it says in the Bible. And we can control our thoughts. And this is where we should start. Start. We should not try to change our mindset, but simply start catching those negative thoughts that go contrary to the Word of God one by one. And not all at once, obviously, because it's impossible. It's going to be overwhelming. But one thought at a time, one lie at a time, and catching it and submitting it to the Word of God. Therefore, we are able to change our thoughts. Number three, what you feed your mind becomes your mindset, like I already mentioned. We can't control our mindset, but we can't control what we feed our mind with. So the more we feed our mind with the Word of God, with messages, worships, with the things of, of godly things, it affects our subconscious mind. And that's how it works. The more ungodly things you put into your mind, it affects your subconscious mind. You become, you gravitate towards that. It becomes more easy. And so number four, confess what you believe and not what you feel. Sometimes this is very painful as well because we might feel sickness. We don't deny the sickness in the body, for example, but we must confess that God is our healer and through his stripes we are healed. Confession plays a big role in this process. Number five, and actually let me read Joshua 1 8. The Lord instructed Joshua, this book of law shall not depart from your mouth. Not only our mind, our thinking, our eyes reading the word, but our mouth. It, it plays a big role when we confess the word of God. Number five, resist negative thoughts and assist positive thoughts. The thoughts are like weeds, you know, negative thoughts. They need to be pulled out like weeds and positive thoughts. They are like good seeds. They need to be assisted. They need to be watered and planted. It's all intentional. 
So resisting the negative thoughts and assisting the positive thoughts. It cannot be passive. We have to do something about it. We have to reject the negative and assist the positive. Number six, celebrate the process. Most likely, it's going to take time to renew our mind. And we have to be okay for, to, to give it time. Not to, be, not to become impatient and thinking, oh my gosh, why am I still like this? It's been this and this much time. Just celebrate the process, the small steps. Look what God did when he created the world. For example, on a day three, he didn't create everything, but some things were already created. And this is what God is doing. He's taking a pause and at the end of the day, he's looking at his creation and he's like, it is good. Wow, there was no humans yet, no this, no that. The creation was not complete yet, but God is already celebrating the process. Every single day, He's creating something, but there are things that are not done still, and yet st He still celebrates. And that is a huge example. That is very big because the small things that God does in us, small tiny steps and breakthroughs that we experience, we have to pause and just say, God, thank you so much. And, you know, kind of feel good about it. Not to focus on the things that God has not done yet, but on the small things that God has done already. Number seven, expect miracles. Expectation is the breathing ground for miracles. It's huge because when many times we expect negative things to happen and then they happen, but we need to expect positive good things to happen because this is where the Holy Spirit works. Because when we expect, you know, we are almost like applying our faith that God will do it, that God will bring breakthrough in my life and without faith it's impossible to please god and faith it's a working ground for god to move and to do something miraculous in our lives i hope you were blessed by this and i hope it helped you in some way shape and form and if you were please leave a comment below what's something that you learned or one thing that you will apply from these seven steps and thank you so much for watching don't forget to subscribe to this channel and also like it Thank you. Bye-bye.